Okay, so I just want to talk about laying up this hand-painted sign. And I know there's many ways to do this with decals and paper rubs and all that stuff. And they're all good methods. But I'm only after a few basic colors here. A uh, very faded, dilapidated red background with a slight, I'm going to add a slight yellow, fragmented yellow border because the Coca-Cola signs back then, some of them had that. Some of them had green, like yellow, green. Some were just white. Some were, had black. Okay, so they varied. And this is probably around 30s, 40s. So I want it to look really like heavily ghosted. And I'd rather do it with paint if, if I can get away with it because paint always looks better. Even though you can still do remarkable jobs with decals and paper and, and different mediums and so on. So I'm just making a rough rectangular shape that I'm going to paint in the red first. And then I'm just going to mask off for the yellow. I could paint the yellow first and then mask off with pin line tape and then red. But I don't really want to get any other colors on here other than the faded red that I'm going to put on here. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay. And then once this is laid on, I'm going to pull this decal cut or it's a paper cut over the tape. I'll carefully lay this in. Okay. Like this uh, cut out over top of this. And then I'll just lightly dust it with white, or actually an aged kind of white. All right. And then I'll peel that away, and then I'll just look and see what I have. Now, this oil paint's been drying for a couple of days, so um, oil paint always has a little bit of a greasy feel. I don't mind that, because when you lay acrylic paint onto an oil painted surface, when you lift, if you're after a weathered, a heavily weathered sign, when you lift tape, sometimes it'll pull the acrylic away in a cool manner. But that's always has its risks. But if you don't mind the anomalies incurred by risk, that's part of the modeler's lifestyle, right? This is part of the things that you deal with and you hope for, and for the most part work in your favor and give you a unique look on your model, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask off one brick thickness for a line, a yellow line, and uh, I'm not going to wait for the paint to uh, kick off any more than it is because I don't mind if, the, if it pulls up, if it pulls up some of the uh, Paint off the brick anyway, I almost encourage it. So the nice thing about Tamiya tape is it cuts so nice right on the model. And in this case, it's only a brick finish. It's not my prized 32 Ford Roadster. <laughs> Even then, I might do it, but <laughs> if I could get away with it. Anyway, I just want to get a indication of, uh, you know, yellow. Sometimes you just, you get tired sometimes, and, you know, you just wing stuff, right? But that's okay. When you're building in this genre, winging it is okay. Okay, here we go. So we got some yellow. So we're just going to 
etch in. It's pretty thin, which is what I want, really. See there? Just catch some of those bricks. Wow, that's neat. Okay, so I'm just going to peel off the center chunk and leave the outside because um, I'm going to do the white still. There's no point in remasking it. Yeah. It's going to be very subtle, just, just like I like, and it's got Still some of the brick effects in there from the weathering from previous oil paints and so on. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is gently lift this graphic tape, which I'll probably do off camera because it's such fiddly my hands will be in the way. And then I'll lay it on, but I'll show you that. I'll lay it all up and then we'll just spray some light white. But I'll probably use buff. Because I don't want it to be pure white, but to faded kind of, or a tinted white with some buff, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to show you the, the mask here now. So you can see I trimmed it. It's on a piece of 60, 60 thou thick plastic that I cut this mask on. And what I did was I trimmed the plastic away just so I can get an idea to line it up, okay? So I'm going to lift this Tamiya tape. That's the beauty of Tamiya is it lifts up easy and goes back down tight again. That's what I like about it. It's you, know, you can pull it, pull it up, put it down, pull it up, pull it down a lot of times, and it, and it's just very reliable that way. That's why I like it. It's actually made for this kind of thing for masking for models. But so what I'm going to do is so this is split down here, two pieces of tape, which is okay. Then I'm going to cut it right here, slice through there, and then probably up through here okay I might even cut this separate too the drink so I have three pieces or well, actually there'll be more than three there'll be one two three four five so I can lay it on because to try to lift this whole piece up it can get risky you can get the tape stuck together or you know tear it or whatever so it's just easier to move and then lay it up you just want to make sure that you have some markers uh, laid down, which I'll use for tape to line up the Coca-Cola within this frame, okay? Now, notice where I've laid this tape over that paint, the Tamiya paint. So when I peel this tape up, if it pulls some of the paint off, good. <laughs> it's a good thing. Not all of it, but a portion of it. Let the anomaly occur, as they say, for the weathered modeler. Okay, so you can see the first piece I cut, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five pieces that I cut the mask into. And you can see how I lifted up this one gently here, and I laid it in. Okay, and you can actually use the brick mortar lines to line things up, okay? Because this line is, is just the edge of the tape and it's perfectly straight. So it helps when you lay up your two tape widths or whatever, how, how, how many it takes. Like sometimes you can get a full width of tape. Like it just depends on the font, right? How easy or how complicated it's going to be. And you just figure it out as you go. And I just decided that this would be the best way to do this. And I think I'm gonna be okay. Uh, these ones here will be a little bit challenging because there's nothing holding it here and so on. But if you're careful and you lift it up with a dental pick and just, to me, a tape comes up quite nice and presses down quite well, as I mentioned. So I think it'll be okay. So we'll just lay in the next pieces. They should fit roughly within this square. If it runs out half a mil here, half a mil here, that's okay. As long as all the pieces go back together square and we're pretty much on this bottom line here. So it'll line up pretty good, the font. Okay.
Oh, that one went well, didn't it? Okay, so I think I showed you this once already, but I want to show you again. <laughs> this is why Tamiya tape is so unreal because, like, it won't, like, it doesn't tear easily. But look at this tiny little piece here. See that? Okay. Now. See that? In she goes. And you know what? There's enough glue on that, tape adhesive is actually the proper term, that when I spray that, it's going to seal that. Right? Like that's, like look at it, like it's on there. It's not, you know, floating away, right? Okay, so we're getting down to the final pieces here. So I think what I'll do is I'll, this, I'll probably line up here because this piece, whoever thought you'd turn masking tape into a model kit, right? <laughs> um, if you get a little bit of tape stretch, like don't worry about it because um, you can cut out uh, like, you know, sections quite easily. So this one's going to give me a bit of trouble. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, that's good. I like the way that's lining up. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, okay. See there, it's a run out a bit. Okay. So, let's just pull that, stretch that a bit. I can put a little bit of a patch in there too. Okay. And this. Wow, I really like the way this went in. That feels good. I'm going to tweak that a little bit. And then we'll bring this corner piece into the game here. I don't know what I'd do without this dental pick. My dentist gave me this pick so 30 years ago. He's a really cool guy. He just got out of, uh, like, uh, he got his doctorate, or, or doctor, or what's it called again when a doctor, a dentist, anyway, um, he, he had started his practice, he was just the coolest guy, like, there were times where I had to get work done where I didn't really have the money, so yeah, no problem, don't worry about it, like, the guy was just so cool, and he knew I was into model building, eh, and he gave me all these dental tools, what a cool guy he was, he kind of looked like Bob Dylan, <laughs> he really did, yeah. He was, uh, what a guy. I wonder if he's still down in Kitsilino. That's where his practice was in Vancouver. What a nice guy, though. Jeez. And he gave me this. This thing's as hard as hardened steel. I've grinded this and scraped. Like, this thing that never bends or breaks. Oops. Um, okay, look, I'm almost there, right? Um, I hope I didn't get too much shadow in there. Okay, so... Um, let's just pop these in. So here's the center blob for the, the O.
Okay, so here we go. So I have some very, very thin white here, very thin. And the idea is, is to just really put on a thin coat. And, uh, you know, all this work and it's going to be over in, you know, five seconds, right? So here we go. Okay, let's unmask this and have a look. I don't normally like to use regular masking tape on models, but oh well. <laughs> 